What's up guys? My name is Nick Davis. Welcome to another 239 Flies How To installment. Uh, today we're going to tie a foxy shrimp. This pattern was shown to me by one of the old guys down at the fly shop uh, by the name of Marsh DeMott. And the type of guy that uh, you could tell caught a few fish in his time. So when he was telling me, I was paying attention. And, you know, I really thought about kind of hanging on to it as one of those, like, yeah, maybe I'll just keep this to myself type deal. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of a sucker. So we changed around a few things on it, um, you know, before you couldn't even really, it didn't even really resemble a shrimp, but, you know, it still got eaten. And uh, it's, a good, it's a good fly for throwing at uh, redfish and snook and tarpon. It lands real soft when it hits the water. It's just just a blob of something that is going to get eaten. So it's really easy to tie and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's do it. All right. We're going to start with our Daiichi 2546 size two. You can tie this on a variety of different hooks, but I like, uh, I like this hook for this fly. It's got a little bit longer of a shank and you can make a little bit more of a body with it, but you can use it on a size one if you want to make it into a bigger fly. You can use a size one zero, and you can also use a SC fifteen or a you know a tarpon hook if you wanted to throw it at some big laid up, some big laid up girls. Let's start by laying uh, some yellow thread, and let me just reiterate, you know, like we're using yellow thread, but you don't have to use yellow thread. You can use chartreuse. You can use it looks really good with like a bonefish pink. Um, you can use orange, it looks really good. You can use any color thread. It doesn't have to be yellow. We're just using yellow today. So, make you a little thread ball so you can help kind of keep this uh, bucktail from catching on, from fouling around the hook. We're going to use the top side with some of these brown fibers in it, brown follicles in it. Come in, you're going to use kind of the top third of the tail. And you can work your way down the, that the ass of the hide, but I like to kind of use these up first because they're the butteriest for this fly. Get in there. Let me get all the little short guys out of there. See if there's any long ones. No, that's a nice taper. That's a nice tail. Love a good tail. And we'll put the white side down and pull up on our thread so that it doesn't kind of spin and rotate. Oh, that looks nice. Make sure that, uh, turn it over and just kind of make sure that the, the hairs are kind of around that little thread ball that we made. And then get a few thread wraps right up against it so that it doesn't foul. And come back in here with your scissors, lift up the skirt a little bit, get underneath, kind of trim on an angle. So we're going to make a little ramp here because we're going to tie some other stuff in on top of it. Get all your trimmings out of the way. And then wrap down onto the hook shank. And really get in there and lock this down. This is such a buttery pattern. So non-offensive, non-assuming. Just like, hey look, I'm a shrimp. You eat shrimp. Everything eats shrimp. Eat me. All right, next we got some uh, mono eyes. Very much an optional step, but we like to include these on our flies. We're going to trim the stem to about a half an inch. And we're going to flatten one side of it here with our pliers and kind of bend it out at an angle. And then we're going to tie it right on the outside of the bucktail that we tied in. This looks cool too if you take uh, if you take some Loon UV Thick and you mix it with some gold glitter 
and you don't cover it with any color hardhead, you just leave it as a gold glitter eyeball. This fly looks sick with that. Do the same thing on the other side. Try to get them parallel, try to get them the same length. It's not the end of the world if you don't. Remember, there is nothing symmetrical in nature. And then bring your thread inside around a few times and just kind of splay those eyes out a little bit. If they're not symmetrical, they're not the exact same, don't worry about it. Again, nothing symmetrical in nature. All right, next, a little bit of gold crystal flash. Normally I can rip it, but it's a little cold in here. You wouldn't know by the waterfall that's cascading off of Pat Rea right now. All right, rip it in half, double it over, and then tie it in right between the eyes. If you're going to target some permit or something, you might want to leave this step off. But I know we're really selling the exclusivity here of the pattern. You don't have to do it this way. All right, next we're going to take our tan Arctic Fox. And this particular patch is fantastic. I'm just pulling some of the longer guard hairs out, but I want to leave a lot of them in like that. That's perfect. And we're going to put that right on top. I need a little bit shorter. You only need maybe a half an inch of this. And then we're just going to tie that right on top of our mono eyes and everything else that we've tied in. And we're going to wrap all this back to, down to the hook shank so that we can get a little bit I'm not going to use the word bulk because we don't want bulk. Just a little bit of uh, density for the body. Yeah, density. That's the word I'm looking for. Next, dub and loop. I'm going to use the Loon dub and loop twister. So really I only need about that much. And kind of measure it with your finger. And then bring it up. Oh, a little too much there. Wrap around the whole loop a couple of times. And then bring it forward and just tie it down all the way up to the Arctic Fox. This is, uh, this is some new stuff that I just, I got a sample of this not too long ago and I use it for this fly. It, it's pretty cool. It's, <laughs> again, I'm a hell of a salesman. You don't necessarily need to have it, but it definitely makes life a little bit easier. This is uh, Loon Outdoors Low Tack Swax. It's swaxy. What the hell is swax? All right, next, I'll just put that there. Wrap this over to here. All right, next, we're going to take another little chunk of Fox. And this we're going to kind of aggressively pull out <laughs> the uh, long guard hairs. Because we're going to dub this or make a dubbing brush out of it or a dubbing loop out of it. Not so much a brush, but a loop. And come back over here. Split your thread. Put it in the about halfway. You know, you want the thread to kind of bisect the uh, the hair. That swax kind of helps kind of helps you spread this and keep it in place very nicely. I'm, I'm, you, it is kind of a nice thing to have. So, if you didn't measure this perfectly, you can kind of hold it up in the air like that and twist. But. Ugh! And then just twist it like so. The nice thing about this dub and loop twister, as opposed to dub and loop twisters that I've used in the past, you can just sit here with the other one and just flick your thumb and just until the cows come home and get super carried away. And then it's gonna snap right here. And then you get to start over. 
it's kind of tough to do with this. It's tough to over loop with this um, dub and loop twister, which I kind of appreciate a little uh, redundancy fail mechanism in place. I'm not really sure that I use that correctly either. But something tells me you guys don't come here for my English. And then you can take your brush. I like to use this lice brush. You can use you can use any brush, it doesn't matter. Next, this is a nice little step that is again is not 100% necessary, but is a nice insurance policy. Add just a little bit of loon hardhead to the thread on top of the hook just to help kind of lock this in place after you wind it on. And then just pull and palmer. I'm going to wrap it pretty tightly. And you're not going to go all the way to the eye of the hook. And you shouldn't go all the way to the eye of the hook. You want to go to where you've got about a quarter to an eighth of an inch left. Maybe halfway between the point of the hook and the eye of the hook. And then tie it off. A few securing wraps. All right, and then just make sure that this is nice and secured. And come back in here with your brush and just lift these fibers up. If you don't have a brush, you need to have a brush. This is a lice brush. I really like this brush. It's my favorite tool that no fly company has realized they need to make yet. I think, I think Loon's working on it though. I'm going to keep pestering them until they do make it. And that's, <laughs> or they disown me, either one, whichever comes first. And next we're going to use a piece of tan EP Foxy brush. And this is just a nice way to kind of cut down on the use of Fox that you use. Um, and kind of help spread it out. Plus the slight difference in materials and material color lets you kind of get a little bit of a segment look, which, you know, shrimp do have segmented bodies along with 8,000 other pieces of uh, food in the animal kingdom. Shout out to my marine biology buddy, Chris Humphreys. Shout out, Chris Humphreys. Also Pat's marine biology teacher when he was in high school. All right, then wind up some of this EP Foxy brush right to the, uh, just about all the way to the end. Take your pair of scissors that you don't care about. Don't use your, your good sharp loon scissors. Use your whatever you've had since you started tying flies. Trim that wire and put a little bit of a, uh, just kind of pull those fibers back a little bit. Flip that over and get your, get your weed guard ready. This is 40 pound Mason hard mono. You can use 20, 30, 40, doesn't matter. If you're just beating trees primarily, or you're going to do a lot of sight fishing in non grassy areas, I recommend either not tying one on or just using like a single 20, just enough to kind of help you slide it around some tree limbs if you uh, get a little overzealous. But since I don't know where this gentleman is going to be throwing these, I'll tie it on with a 40 and if he wants to cut it off, he absolutely can. All right, so now let's get back in here again, pull all these fibers out. Wow, this one looks really good. All right, last step. Kind of pull the bottom half of these down with your fingers. And then we're just going to 
kind of straighten up the sides a little bit. We're not going to be too aggressive with this. We're just going to barely just give it a little trim, just a little, just a little clip, just to just to make it kind of flat, flatter, and then just kind of pull up on the top a little bit and just kind of run your razor along it like so. That looks good, rough chop. I see a couple that are annoying me. Take care of those. Here's a good little trick. Grab your lighter, and then if you have some loose hairs in around the eye of the hook, and then just kind of touch that flame to the eye of the hook, and it's gonna singe all of those little loose hairs that are gonna, are gonna stick out of your of your um, epoxy here, of your finish. Kind of cleans things up, you know. Zap it with that light. Man, things that are gonna get eaten, that. And there you have it, foxy shrimp.